Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I am here today to do our first project on my um, second Facebook page, which is Tea Scones and Stampin' Up. Um, recently, I became a Stampin' Up demonstrator again, and so um, this video is going to be Stampin' Up heavy with the numbers, uh, product numbers, and everything like that. Um, if you want to place an order, mine is just tiffanymcgill.stampinup.net. So anyway, um, this morning, Susie Barnes, who's Why Not Stamp Everything, had a quick little tutorial um, on a, a box. You know, I love making boxes. And I thought this would be a fun, quick project to kind of get us into Valentine's Day, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and stuff like that. So um, I do have a sinus infection and a double ear infection. So my voice is going to come in and out. So I'm sorry, but it is what it is. Okay, so here's the project. It's a little box, super cute, really easy to make, um, and a three by three card with, you can do the envelope as well. I just, at the moment, couldn't find my envelopes, so I'm, I'm not gonna do an envelope, but you definitely can. We're gonna use the Sweet Conversation stamp set, which is number 157618. If my camera wants to play nice, probably not. There we go. Okay. We're also going to use the um, Sweet Talk Paper Collection, which is number 157616. Um, I didn't pull out the die cuts because um, I just challenged myself to use what was on my desk, and this is what was on my desk at the time. Here's a quick peek of the paper collection. I'll show you the front and then you can kind of see the backs there. You get two sheets of everything. Um, this one has candy boxes and then hearts on the other side. It also had um, this page in here, which I thought was super fun. And I think that's, and then this page. And as you can see, I've been using this collection, so I only have scraps of some of the pages. I didn't think to do a um, reveal video first, but oh well. And then I'm just going to use my scraps. I have everything in this like gallon size Ziploc of all my scraps. Um, if anybody wants a good tip, these hefty bags, the, they're called Jumbo. They fit the 12 by 12 paper collection in there perfectly. So you can keep all your scraps and your paper collection together. Because as you can see, um, I do keep mine in the original packaging, but it does split on the side, you know, when you're shoving stuff in there. So the jumbo bags work perfectly. All right. So we're hoping to have this video, once we start the project, start to finish, less than 15 minutes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, tell you everything you're going to need. You're going to need one piece of cardstock, and I'm going to use, I used white over here, but I think I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to use um, Gorgeous Grape, which is one of my, I'm not a huge purple person, but this one is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Um, so Gorgeous Grape 146987. And you need um, two pieces um, that are, hold on, um, excuse me, one piece that's five and a half by five and a half, and one piece that is five and a half and a smidge by five and a half by a smidge. Now, I'll show you that in just a minute, so just get your regular eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock, um, whatever color you want to use, and then you're going to need... Um, a little piece to put on the top. The box measures three and a half by three and a half. And so, um, depending on what size you like your border, that's what size scrap you're going to need. Now, this has a little bit more border than what I typically like. Um, so, I think I was just trying to fit this piece in there. But I think this time... I'm going to go with this. 
So pick out a little scrap that you're going to use for your top. I'm going to do probably three and a fourth by three and a fourth. Um, I'm not sure yet, but we'll get there. And then you want to pick out your colors for your, um, I did two little hearts. Um, Stampin' Up! has these really cool punches. It's the heart and the scalloped hearts. I just don't have that punch. So, but I do have a regular heart punch that was Stampin' Up! So I'm going to use that, or you can freehand cut some stamps. So, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and punch those out now. So if you want to punch yours out too, um, you can go for it. Now, as you can see, my paper doesn't exactly match because, you know, I'm just starting back out with Stampin' Up! So I don't have a lot of the paper. Um, and also, um, for those of you who follow me on my other Facebook page or if you follow me here on YouTube, um, you know I just moved um, again. And right now I'm staying at my mom's house while my husband's deployed. And um, so I just have a little craft corner. So I couldn't bring my whole craft room with me. Um, it was just too much. So um, I've got to work with what you got to work with, you know. And these papers I had, which um, I think they match you know, perfectly fine. I think they look beautiful together. Um, so that's what we're going to go with. The green that I'm using is one of my favorite greens. This is Granny Apple Green 146990. Beautiful. And then the gorgeous grape. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put my scraps away and I'm going to put my paper collection back in this bag and it is a little bit longer but it's just easy to fold it over you're fine all right so let's go ahead and do this you need your paper trimmer um and honestly i don't know what number let me see if it's on here oh yeah paper trimmer one five two three nine two I did not, honestly, I did not want to love this paper trimmer because I was one of the old school Stampin' Up! that had the old school paper trimmer and I loved it, loved it, loved it. And you know, when you love something <laughs> and they discontinue it, you don't want to love the next thing. But I honestly have to say, I find this paper trimmer better than that one. The only thing that is not better is the old one had the... Um, um, like pockets on the bottom to where you could you have like a little case you can put like paper clips and a pencil and stuff like that in there this one doesn't have it but as far as cutting surface um, I, I, I honestly love this one better um, don't judge my my board because I have not taken off the protective paper um, it's a thing between me and my husband it's a funny story he always wants to just rip the protective papers off and I always keep them on and so now it's just a thing. I just keep it on to annoy him. So <laughs> that's why it looks like there's bubbles. There's not. Um, if you take off your protective paper like you're supposed to, it's a beautiful sleek surface but because, you know, I don't know, because we're weird. There you go. Okay. I'm also going to use a stamp block. Um, I have the whole set of the stamp blocks. I like to stamp with the long one, I don't know why. I just, I just do. This is my favorite one. I use it for everything. Um, what else? What else? You can use the Stamparatus. Um, I don't have the Stampin' Up! Stamparatus. I have a generic one that is not the best. I mean, it does its job, but it's not the best. So um, I do recommend getting the Stampin' Up! one. That's on my wish list um, of things to buy. But you can use Stamparatus or your clear blocks. And you can use your scoreboard. I do have the Stampin' Up! scoreboard, which is this one right here. I finally broke down and bought it. Um, for those of you who follow me, you know that I've been wanting this for a long time. I just didn't, you know, I had a, I had a scoreboard that was just fine. Well, mine got broken, and so I got the Simply Scored. Um, I haven't used, I, I wanted to simply score because it has little um, arrows that you can add on here and I haven't used the arrows yet, <laughs> but it's okay. I will eventually. So you can use scoreboard or you can just use the paper trimmer to do this. Okay. So let's get started. I'm going to put this timer on. Hold on. Let me unlock my phone. Um. Hold on, let's see. 
delete that timer and I need 15 minutes. All right, here we go guys, we're ready. The alarm will sound when it's time. So you need your piece of cardstock. You need to cut it at five and a half by five and a half. So five and a half by five and a half. Okay. Set that aside. Well, actually, no. We're going to go ahead and score that. So now you're going to take that same piece of paper and you're going to score it at one inch. Rotate one inch. Rotate one inch and rotate. You can use either one inch. It doesn't matter. You know, I could kind of come on this side in one inch. It don't matter. Okay. So that's my bottom. Now, what I like to do so I don't get them confused is I like to mark with a little letter, which is the bottom, which is the top, because they're going to be um, very, very close in measurement. So I just mark that with the B. Now, on your other piece, you need it to be slightly, slightly um, larger. So that's the only bad thing is that you can't get both pieces out of one because you need this to be five and a half and one tick mark or your box is going to be super tight. Um, so hmm, we could have did two different colored papers, can't we? Let's do that. Why not? I'm going to make, no, I'm going to do mine the same color. No, I'm going to do mine a different color. How about that? So I'm going to do five and a half and one little tick mark over. And five and a half and one little tick mark over. So now with the two papers, now I can make a whole nother box out of these leftover papers. So it does work out because see how just slightly more your top of your box is going to be. It's going to be just like this. See how you can see the purple behind the green? Just slightly bigger. Okay. All right. Now let's go ahead and score this box. One inch. One inch. Oh no. <laughs> one inch and one inch. Obviously, your boxes are going to go faster because you're not talking and um, you probably picked your colors how you want it. All right, we're just going to use whatever you have as a bone folder. I have Stampin' Up! bone folders, but um, my niece was over and she used them for glue and they're upstairs. I forgot to bring them back downstairs. Um, they're, they were in the dishwasher. So I'm just using this whatever scraper thing. Alright. You don't have a bone folder. That's one of the first things I bought from Stampin' Up! They're inexpensive. So... Or if you don't have one right now, use a credit card or whatever. All right, let's go ahead and cut up our boxes. And so we varnish. And what we're going to do is just cut up and take a tiny little wedge out like that. Um, these are paper snips right now. They are um, out of stock. They're coming in. As you can see, mine are very well loved. Um, I really don't have separate scissors for... Um, my stuff, I just use the same scissors for everything. Um, some people have, you know, a pair specifically for ribbon and whatnot. Um, I don't use a lot of ribbon, so I don't. All right, so just did it on both sides. We're going to rotate it and do the same thing to the opposite end. Just cut on that score line, take a wedge, and take a wedge. Okay. Same thing, cut on the score line, take a wedge, and take a wedge. That's it, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing on the top. Um, for me, it doesn't matter. Well, this is a square, so it's not gonna matter. Sometimes on rectangles, people like to do their tabs on the short side, 
um, some people like to do it on, on the long side. It doesn't matter as long as you do it, um, like if you're going to do it on this side, you have to do it on the top. You can't do like bottom and left or whatever. You know, you have to do top and bottom. So, all right, and we're going to go through and pop these out. Turn it over to the opposite side. Same thing. Flap and flap. And wedge and wedge. Okay, pull these little things out. Now you can use the tear and tape. You can use wet glue. Um, I'm a wet glue person. Um, Stampin' Up! has some great Tombow glue. Unfortunately, I am allergic to the Tombow glue, so um, you will not see me using Tombow glue um, for obvious reasons, but um, I love liquid glue. And so I would suggest using liquid glue. It gives you the little wiggle room. But if you're mass producing these boxes, um, you can use the tear and tape. And honestly, I'm not sure about the Stampin' Still, how strong it is. Um, I did buy it, I just haven't used it yet. So this is my new thing I'm going to try out. The Stampin' Still, which is number 152813. We're going to try this in one of the videos. Just not today. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and glue... that. When I first started off as a demonstrator um, back in 2008, I wasn't definitely allergic to latex and so I could use a Tombow glue, but now I'm definitely allergic to it so I can't, there's no way. All right, so we're just going to do the same thing to the bottom of our box or your top, whichever way you decided to do it. So I'm just going to glue it, line it up. Stick it and glue it. Now, for my card, I am going to use a piece of Whisper White, which I do not have the packaging for, so I don't have the line number for that. Anyway, let's show our box real quick. So, it's going to be a little snug, but look at that beautiful beautiful box all right now what we need to do is put on our cover piece and my paper trimmer so it's three and a half by three and a half so I'm gonna do the tick mark before the half which is what three eighths three and three eighths but it's the um, tick mark before the half Because I just want a little bit of a border. I don't want a full. Some people like a quarter of an inch border. I just like a little bit. Like an eighth of an inch border. So let's go ahead and get that on there. I'm very happy that I chose to do two different colors, actually. It's another little fun surprise, right? Here, person opens the box and now it's purple. All right, so let's go ahead and line that up as best as you can. This is why I like liquid glue for this, because you have a little bit of wiggle room. Okay. Perfect. My hearts still match, and so I'm going to go ahead and... Now, this heart, I stamped the You Are Cute on there. I'm not sure if I'm loving that, um, so I think I'm going to stamp something else on there. So let's go ahead and pull out our stamps. I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use um, Happy to Have You in My Life. I'm going to use that. And I'm going to use the Memento Ink, which is number 132708. It's the black Memento in my block. Again, I like stamping with the long block. Some people will like to do the exact... Um, size block but I don't like my hands anywhere near my ink <laughs> so I need to be far away far away all right so 
we're just going to go for it straight down straight up don't rock it i kind of rocked it but that's okay what i mean by that is if you rock it it gives you a double layer so if you look at my m well that's okay it's not a big deal i'm sure i'm probably the only one that you know notice it when you give it out no one's going to notice it okay so huh, i got ink on my hand ink on my hand so i don't i don't i don't like it I lost my chamois in the moo, so right now I just have a wet face cloth in a bag, and it's very well loved. Um, but my chamois on order, so it should be here. I love the chamois, not just for the stamps, but for everything. I'll chamois everything. I'm going to use my Winka Stella. Um, I didn't tell you all that in the beginning, but right now I have it right here. So I'm just going to actually do Winka Stella this way just to make it look like it's the little lines, kind of like the little lines of the stamp set. I don't know, I just made that up. Gotta look cute, why not? Um, your dimensions, um, I, I don't have any more dimensions on this sheet, but guess what? The corners are perfect dimensions. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my dimensionals on here and I think this heart I need them on the whole thing okay here we go I think we're doing good on time all right so there's that and come on that oh Okay, just decide which one I want to be the top of my box. Um, this way. So I'm going to pop this one down. And then I'm going to use some more dimensionals. Here's a pack I have. Uh -huh, no, it doesn't have the... I have a billion packs of dimensionals. Of course, I can't find one right now that has the product number on it, but... If you just search dimensionals, you hear me. Call, you'll, you'll hear me call them pop dots. Because um, when I first started crafting, um, Stampin' Up did have pop dots, and so I call them pop dots. All right. So for the green one, I just need dimension on one side and glue on the other, because I'm just gonna kind of do this there you go you can always add more you can add a ribbon on the top that would be super cute you can do a belly band um i am gonna add some something i know i didn't say this in the beginning but there's a lot of fun 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 embellishments stamp up has oh you know what should i do a little heart hmm hmm <laughs> I think I'm just going to do basic gems. Um, this one is the new sea glass, faux sea glass shapes. Um, don't know the number is cut off. This one is the brush metallic adhesive dots, number 156506. Wonderful gems, 153536. And then heart epoxy droplets, 148583. Now, to be honest, I'm not sure if some of these are still in the catalog and some of them are retired. Um, the catalog's retiring. The, the Christmas one just retired. And like I said, I've been sick for a couple months and so I haven't had a chance to really um, to go through and see what exactly is still there, what's not. But I know basic gems are still there. Bas Rhinestone basics. And this is 144220. Okay, so let me see how much time we have left on my timer. Ah, we only got 40 seconds. <laughs> I talk too much. Anyway, I'm going to use a big one. And I just want one here. And I'm going to use a little one. Again, I don't know where my pokey tool is. My niece had it for something, and then I lost it, so I don't know where it is. Okay. 
So if I wasn't talking so much, this project would be done in 15 minutes, but because I talk too much, you know, here we go. Okay, so I just lost the backing for this. That's okay. Okay. Well, at least we got the box done in 15 minutes. All right, so <laughs> let's get the card done. All right, so what I'm going to do is um, grab some Whisper White, and this is just stamping. And I'm going to take, now, I again, I couldn't bring my whole craft room, and so all I have with me are my Regal's um, stamp pad. I bought the Regal set, and so I'm very limited in my colors. So I have Old Olive, Shaded Spruce, Blackberry Bliss, Crushed Curry, Garden Green, Real Red, uh, Pumpkin Pie, Cherry Cobbler, Rich Razzleberry. Ooh, I might use that one and Cajun Craze. Um, this one is um, Blackberry Bliss and Real Red, but I might do, and the ink pads right now are not available because of shipping, but um, they're gonna come back in. I think I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do Blackberry Bliss and Old Olive. How about that? Just to kind of match the card a little bit better. Let's do that. All right. So again, you can use your Stamparatus. You can use just the clear block. Um, whatever you want. Um, you need a four by six. I'm sorry, a three by six scrap. And I have a scrap right here on my desk. So you can do three by six. I love making three by three cards because you can always use your scraps. You always have a scrap in there that's three by six. All right, and then we're gonna score it down the middle at three. Use your bone folder or whatever you have to burnish that and then um, okay, let's go for it. I'm going to take that stamp off, which I did not clean very well. Let me clean my block. All right, and I'm going to use the um, The large heart, the smaller hearts, and so I'm using this one and this, this one, this one and this one, and I'm going to use the, uh, I'm going to use text me since it's right here. I'm going to use text me. Okay, those are the three I'm going to use. Not using garden green okay so first we're gonna do our dark color and what I'm gonna do is put it upside down put my block on it and I'm just gonna stamp I need some scratch paper I usually have my grid down um, but I didn't think to bring it over here. Because I, I usually don't stamp on this desk, my video recording desk, I usually stamp on a different desk, but you know, when you're somebody else's house, you gotta do with what you can. All right, so I just stamped a big one kind of there. And I'm not really paying too much attention to where I'm stamping, I'm just getting it on there. That one I don't really like it, so I'm just gonna go over it, it's fine. Maybe put a little piece here. Uh, let me scooch up a little bit. Maybe put the top of the hearts here. A little piece there. And maybe do like another half a heart. There we go. I think that's cute. You know, nothing heavy. Don't stress yourself. Just make a cute background, however you want. 
All right, I haven't opened this one yet. All right, so we're going to use this one. We're going to use the um, old olives. This, this is how much I don't like ink on my hands. I won't touch this stamp um, because I won't touch the top of it because it has ink on it. I do not like my hands dirty, which is weird for a crafter, but to each his own, right? All right, and then I'm going to set this stamp up. I just like to make sure it's straight on my... Um, I just line it up with one of the lines on my grid and then just press it on there. Um, I do need... I forgot I need the bigger purple. I mean, you know what? I'm going to do the bigger one first. So I'm going to take that off and I'm going to go ahead and clean off my... Um, this stamp, the big one. I'm just showing off for y'all because before I, I, if I wasn't on camera, I would not have picked that up. <laughs> not with my hands. Because now I have ink on my hands. It is water, um, water-based ink. And so it does rinse off, um, very easily. I just, um, I have OCD and it just does not allow me to get dirty. Okay. Here we go. And like I said, this with the chamois is so much easier. You just wipe it on the chamois, it's good to go. You don't have to struggle with it. But mine got lost, and so I have to wait for my new one. And of course, you know, you don't realize you don't have it until you need it. Alright, so I'm inking this guy up. A little bit more because it's a new ink pad. I'm gonna stamp it off first to see. Yeah. Let me stamp it off again. Just conditioning the ink pad. Okay, that should be fine now. Okay. All right, so we're just gonna make sure this is even. Stick this here in the middle. And I'm gonna give it just a little bit more ink. I love these clear stamps because you can do it again, like I did, and you're just fine. Or you can, um, if you have the stamp apparatus, you know, it's fine. You can just redo it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and place this heart on the other side of my block. I think this is another reason why I like this long block because I can just flip it over and do the next one. Let me stamp this off. Okay, and I'm gonna put this little green one right here. Super cute. I'm gonna move these to the side and take out that memento ink again All right. I promise when you do this and you're not talking and you're not showing a tutorial it's very quick um, I made one and the card start to finish 15 minutes um, so this one is just taking a little bit longer because I just want to make sure everyone you know stays up with it all right so I'm just wiping off my stamps there and I need my text me um, stamp I'm just gonna make sure that's even my memento black I probably could have did this in the um, blackberry bliss but I didn't okay I'm just gonna stick that on there and a cute little text me hey girl. and that's it so um, I don't like cards that are quote unquote naked on the inside. So I always put just something in there. Just take your scraps and um, just cut a little piece to put on the inside. Um, or you can stamp on the inside. Just something. I think I'm going to go ahead and stamp the text me in the Blackberry Bliss um, on the inside. Just so, you know, the person knows that, you know, your car, your, the inside of your card was not an afterthought. So, and plus, you don't have to write as much. Like, that was my favorite thing as a kid. My mom always, like, we, we always made handmade thank you cards. And she was like, well, put a sticker or something there. And then we would always try to find, like, the biggest sticker so we didn't have to write as much. <laughs> you know, loopholes. So, yeah. But there's enough space so you can do a, a really nice... 
um, note and you have your card and you can stamp that same thing on the outside of your envelope. And here is our cute little project. And these are not traditional um, Valentine colors, but I think they're perfect, especially if you want more of a masculine per se card, you can do this. Um, or someone who's just, you know, not everyone likes pink. You know, I'm a pink person, but I know a lot of crafters who just don't like pink. And so you don't have to use pink, use a different color. Um, if you want to jazz up your card, I'm going to use Shimmery Crystal Effects 150892. And instead of using the gems on my card, because that does add to your postage, I'm going to use this on here. So you can make your own little dots. Um, I'm just going to put it on a few like that. Yeah, I like that. You can always add more, add less, whatever you want. You can add bling, you can add um, Link of Stella's, whatever you want. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for watching. Bye.